Sharks definitely have an image problem. After all, they do, on rare occasion, kill people. But what's not commonly known is that they're in deep trouble globally. The population of some species has declined by more than 90% due to overfishing and our insatiable appetite for shark fin soup. Larger animals, such as hammerheads, oceanic white tips, and tiger sharks, are disappearing fast. There's one place in the world where sharks still flourish, the Bahamas. In the crystalline waters of this island nation, sharks are highly protected. It's illegal to kill them. Stuart Cove's great passion is sharks. Traveling in his small plane, he helps spread a gospel of shark advocacy across the Bahamas. A successful entrepreneur and self-described shark geek, Stewart and his dedicated staff have introduced thousands of scuba divers to these much maligned creatures. Shark tourism is his business, and the most sought after and prestigious job at his operation is shark feeder. Competition for a handful of positions is tough. It's also a family affair. Stuart Cove's teenage children, Sasha and Travis, are both veteran shark wranglers. With a dramatic increase in attacks and fatalities in recent years, sharks can't seem to shape their bad reputation. They could sure use some help with their public relations. Demand for their fins, jaws, and meat grows each year. There is one remarkable country, though, where sharks are not hunted. Populations are in trouble globally. 30% of shark and ray species around the world are endangered. It's a demand for shark fins, liver oil, and other products that have driven numerous populations to the brink of extinction. The people of the Bahamas take the plight of sharks very seriously. Please, 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 please protect our sharks. In 2011, the tiny nation outlawed all forms of commercial shark fishing and international trade in shark products. The Asian market for shark fins, they look everywhere. You know, anywhere there's a shark, they're gonna send boats. And of course, everybody knew that the Bahamas had this incredible population of sharks. And so they started sending scouts into communities talking to fishermen, hey, would you like to get involved in this incredible industry? catch sharks, we'll buy the fins. You know, and it started pretty quietly, but they were in a number of communities. We knew this was something we didn't want in our country. If they could declare it a national park, then... Eric Carey is the executive director of the Bahamas National Trust, an organization charged with the conservation of natural and historic sites. We never ever had a fishing industry for sharks, and so sharks were never under threat in the Bahamas, and as such, We've always had pretty good populations of sharks. The need for the legislation came when the scouts started coming in looking to exploit our shark populations. That's the only time we really felt uh, we needed to offer more protection for sharks in our country. One of the Bahamas' most vocal shark advocates is Stuart Cove. He loves sharks. 
So much so that he's devoted much of his life to studying and scuba diving with the animals. It's also his business. And shark tourism is booming. From our research, it shows that 40% of the divers come to the Bahamas because of the shark dives. We are doing approximately 60,000 exposures into the water every year with visitors. So it is a huge economic engine and helps the economy. Hotel rooms, the taxi drivers benefit, the shops, everybody benefits from the shark experiences. But that's not the most important thing. What I think Bahamians really appreciate is how important the sharks are for the health of our marine environment. Coordinating the hordes of shark diving tourists that visit the Bahamas each week is a logistical challenge. Many of them hail from cruise ships, making short stops at Nassau. Shark diving definitely appeals to more adventurous types. First shark dive. My daughter said she wanted to do it, and as you can see, she's not here, I'm by myself. <laughs> she chickened out this morning. I'm here with my family, we can't wait. I'm pretty stoked about it. I think it was a collective decision that it sounded like fun. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you kind of see that and you're like, what a thrill. Of course we want to dive with sharks. Really looking forward to my first shark dive. I feel like a kid before Christmas. I've seen lots of sharks, but uh, I've never had them, as they say, they're going to be up close and personal, so I'm looking forward to that. Shark feeders are like knights heading off to battle. They need a suit of armor to protect them. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> it's a real knife. We're not faking it, buddy. I'm feeling quite nervous. <laughs> but it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. I think. I'm going to concentrate on keeping my, my limbs together. We have some grouper pieces. Uh, that's pretty much the main thing that we have in here today. I think there's also uh, a few snapper bits in here as well. But this grouper, this is part of their main diet. This is what sharks like. I'm excited. I'm really She's excited. She's excitable. I'm excitable. <laughs> ready? All right, let's go. <laughs> I love pushing people in. I'm fine if I die. I'm going to be fine. Big giant step. <laughs> It doesn't take long for the guests of honor to show up for feedings. Many of these sharks have been doing this for decades. They're old pros. The more excitable participants are the big groupers, looking for a quick handout. Guests descend to the bottom first and line up around the feeding site. The feeder follows shortly afterwards with the bait box. The sharks actually came like between me and my son. We were sitting like we are now and the sharks came between us. They came over our heads, they came around the sides and, and back to the feeder and it was amazing. They were like right? attacking the feeder, attack them. The shark dive was phenomenal, it was an incredible experience. It was really fun. Definitely one of the best dives I've done so far. It was a lot less scary once you got down there until you started really thinking about what you were doing. And it was just really crazy. I mean, really one of the craziest things I've ever done. I liked when he was tickling them under the chin to make them fall asleep and he would move them around. And and push them towards people, and oh, it was fun. I never saw anything like it. Never dreamed it was yeah. gonna be like that. The feeder can immobilize sharks, either by flipping them upside down or by stimulating their sensitive snouts. The animals lapse into a state of tonic immobility that's similar to fainting. The sharks are briefly incapacitated just long enough for guests to get a closer look. 
Oh, it was incredible. They told us not to touch them, but we did. <laughs> Sharks were swimming everywhere. I kept getting nudged. I thought it was my buddy nudging me. Look over, it's a seven, eight foot shark hitting into me. It was pretty cool. It's safe to say that this operation is the biggest shark diving operation in the world. We have made a huge impact on the shark populations, not only in the Bahamas, but around the world. The Bahamas stopped long lining in 1993 due to the shark interaction experiences. And more recently, the whole country has been turned into a shark park. You're not allowed to kill any sharks here, take any parts. You're not allowed to export any type of uh, shark product. And it's this stance that this country has taken is spreading around the world. That was amazing. I never saw anything like it. I had a great time. Crazy. They're awesome. The, the families divide. The part that was freaky was when they swam straight at you and then at the last minute, like, swam away. But you got used to it. Sounds weird, but you did. It was really, really awesome. Well, I got hit in the head with the tail. So cool. They're so close to you. You want to touch them so bad, but then you're really scared too. So. <laughs> I wanted to so bad, but I was like, no, I, I like this arm. Now we can say we've checked this one off the bucket list. That was awesome. One of the coolest things I've ever done, easily. Give it up for our fearless Peter Rudy! <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Cove's two children, Travis, and younger sister, Sasha, have been diving with and feeding sharks for years. Oh, I wore these my first time. A bit of sibling rivalry developed between them when Travis was recognized as the world's youngest shark feeder. It wasn't long before a nine-year-old Sasha decided she had to outdo her older brother. Today. I'm breaking my brother's world brand new. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Youngest shark feeder. I've just been diving and with sharks since I was really, really little because growing up with my family being in the business that they are, I spent most of my time on the water either swimming and snorkeling with the sharks. What are you feeling right now? Excited. Happy. Which ones are mine? <laughs> my brother was the youngest shark feeder in the world. Every living moment, he would just rub it in my face that he was the youngest shark feeder in the world and I hadn't even fed. And so I was like, no, this just can't happen. And so on my 10th birthday, I got out of school on a Wednesday early and I went down and I fed and I was so scared. Well, my kids started diving at a very young age, uh, started snorkeling with sharks at a young age, and diving with sharks from when they were eight years old. So my daughter, Sasha, they're very competitive, my children. When she was 10, she wanted to be the youngest shark feeder in the world, so we took her in the early morning and let her feed the sharks. And uh, so right now, as it stands, I think she's the youngest shark feeder in the world. One of Sasha Cove's friends from her school in Canada is also a veteran scuba diver. At only 14, Filmmaker Danny Morrow's daughter, Samantha, was also exposed to the underwater world at a very young age. My dad, ever since I was in a high chair, has been showing me his shark documentaries and teaching me to love the water and the ocean and all the animals in it. I have to admit it, Sam seems to be a bit of an adrenaline junkie and if it's not climbing trees or doing flips on a trampoline, she's always into doing something scary. I've been filming sharks for about 20 years now, and I think through osmosis, she's kind of developed this fascination with sharks. And I think she wanted to take it to the next level, and the next level is to actually get in the shark suit and get right in with the sharks and try and feed them. After hearing stories about Sasha and her shark-obsessed family, the two girls forged a common bond. It was only a matter of time before Sam decided that shark feeding was something that she had to do. There's one there. 
To get more accustomed to sharks before attempting to feed them, Sasha encouraged Sam to try a slightly tamer encounter. At the famed Atlantis Resort, guests can walk with Caribbean reef and nurse sharks. First of all, I introduce myself. My name is Santiba, okay? I'm gonna be basically one of the instructors. I'm gonna give you the briefing and let you know exactly what's gonna be going on inside this tank. First of all, you have 22 sharks inside this very same tank here, okay? Not aggressive, so nothing to worry about. We have the Caribbean reef shark. There seems to be a boundless fascination with sharks, especially for kids. Perhaps they don't have such deep-seated fears as adults. Most of them never saw Jaws. Okay, guys, so basically that's it for the briefing. Are you all ready for a great shark dive? Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Sam, this is gonna be a cakewalk compared to what we're doing tomorrow. We're gonna get in the suit and feed them. <laughs> like scuba divers, guests on the shark walk breathe compressed air. But instead of using regulators, they breathe with a state-of-the-art helmet. Glass viewing ports in the helmets provide an unobstructed view of the resident sharks. At the resort's Mayan temple, visitors can also rocket through the shark exhibit on a water slide or slowly raft down a river while surrounded by sharks. Dive, girls. Awesome. Definitely a different experience than diving. It was really neat to have the helmets on. Yeah, tomorrow we're gonna put the chainmail on and do the real thing. <laughs> I'm excited. Awesome. One of the most coveted jobs in the dive industry, and particularly here at Stewart Coves, is becoming a shark feeder. Not only is it potentially dangerous, but it's very exciting. You get up and close and personal with these animals. And one of the things we're very proud of is we have women shark feeders. It's a macho type thing. You're getting down there, you're feeding these sharks up to 40 at a time, you're getting beat up, pounded. It's like being a linebacker. And for women to do it is really quite something special. I was working a job I hated in England, and I was a diver. And I decided, why not go professional? Found Stuart Cove online, and they accepted my application. And here I am. Once you're here at Stuart Cove for a while, you get the opportunity to uh, train as a shark feeder. And when you're a shark feeder, you have to get your hands a bit dirty. We're going to cut the bits nice and small to about the size of a hand. Uh, the reason we do that is so any kind of size shark can consume the piece without dropping it. Obviously, we don't want bait to be flying around when we've got customers uh, in the situation. So uh, we make sure that any kind of size shark can just swallow the piece whole. We only feed them a very small amount. Only a couple of individuals get fit. Uh, and it's only four to five pieces uh, amongst 40 sharks. So we're giving them only under a percent of what they eat every day. Uh, so it's actually just like a little reward for them. We're just rewarding their polite feeding behavior when they're around us. This isn't exactly the most glamorous part of the job. Uh, you go home smelling like fish and chain mail. Not exactly very nice, but you do get used to it. And on a really hot day, it can get pretty stinky around here. <laughs> Before attempting to feed reef sharks, Sasha Cove and Samantha Morrow joined Charlotte Faulkner on a scheduled shark dive. Hi, I'm Sasha. Hi, Sasha. Nice to meet you. I'm Charlotte. Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, Sam and Charlotte. You excited? Yeah, super excited. It's my first bohemian shark dive. All right, guys, have you got all your gear together? Yeah. yeah. Everything's on the boat? Uh -huh. All right, let's go. We're going to head on out to the site. Awesome.
All shark feeders at Stewart Coves are required to don protective chainmail suits. This is chainmail made of titanium. It's all handmade, so it's very, very expensive. Uh, each chain is interwoven by hand, so very, very cool stuff. Um, sometimes the teeth do pass through, uh, but it does protect us from the majority of any bite that does happen. Ugh. Detailed briefings are also part of the job description. Now, there's a number one rule on this dive is no hand movement at all. It's really important we don't move our hands around like so. Our hands are going to be crossed, obviously, on the railing or holding a camera like that. That's the only way you're going to be, OK? Once you're all back on board, all safely, I can come on back, hopefully, with all my fingers and toes, OK? So I, I never get sick of this. I've done it a 100 times more than that, but it's always different. Shag's behavior is different each time. So you learn something each time. The kids and other guests descend to the feeding site before the action begins. It's showtime. The Ray of Hope shipwreck is the ideal staging ground for a dive like this. It's a relatively small and contained space where divers can gather around the port deck railing. It's still close to the action, yet far enough away to safely observe the feeding. We're trying to get them to do polite feeding, polite feeding behavior where there's no aggression at all around humans, and the food that we give them is like a positive reinforcement for that polite feeding behavior they're showing us. And as the feeder, we try and keep the sharks in that polite feeding uh, behavior during the whole feed. Sharks are just such majestic creatures. They live out there and they're so strong and graceful and beautiful and they can cause so much damage if they really want to, but they really don't and they have such a bad image. I feel so strongly about sharks. They're my favorite animal by far. Our dive can change people's attitudes from a negative perception of sharks to a positive perception. And we see this change just in one afternoon. And they come on up and they just have this love and appreciation for sharks, which is such a positive message we need to spread. The Bahamas truly are a shark haven. Woo! Another day at the office. Woo! <laughs> so now that you've seen the sharks, tomorrow we'll teach you how to feed them. And it's gonna be pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah. All right, Sam, so how was it then? Oh, that was amazing. I don't know how you could do that so close. That's the first step, getting on one side of the railing. Now you're going to come on the other side and feed them. What do you think? Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Once in a lifetime thing. After the Atlantis shark walk experience and a thrilling demonstration of shark feeding, the two 14-year-old girls were ready for a bit more excitement. This is your big day, last chance, back out. Well, this is my first time actually feeding, so I'm a bit nervous. Are you sure? Last chance. This is a little bit out of my comfort zone. Australian shark feeder Terry Harrison was charged with helping the girls gear up and to keep them safe. Older brother Travis also joined the group as a safety diver. My kids grew up around the dive shop here, and so from the time they could work, they were aware of sharks. And they have no fear of sharks. You know, it's so important these youngsters getting out there and interacting with sharks. If the kids aren't scared of sharks, and the kids are showing that the sharks aren't this indiscriminate killer that the media has shown over the last few decades, we know that if sharks are interacted with in a sensible way, they're not gonna eat you, they're not gonna bite you. Today we've got something real special happening. We've got two little gnarly chicks coming out, and they're only 14 years of age, so if I had this opportunity, I definitely would've jumped at it. <laughs> Well, you know, it's sort of like playing football, except the other players have teeth and they can get really vicious. <laughs> I bet. 
if you are bitten on the arm or anywhere, just uh, I'll be there so I will stop it from doing whatever it needs to. But just pull your arm nice and close, okay? These are sharks are scavengers. So mm -hmm. as soon as something starts fighting back, they're like, nah, I ain't into this. Mm -hmm. And they tend to let go. But remember, we're going to be wearing chain mail, okay? The idea of chain mail is when the sharks bite down, all these tiny links come together and stop the teeth from penetrating our skin. A lot of the time it works, okay? If a shark jumps onto your arm and his teeth get caught, he's going to panic, okay? So when they panic, they usually pull away and their teeth get stuck. So we need to be mindful of this. You happy? You want this fighter or...? Both Samantha and Sasha were a bit smaller than typical shark feeders. So some minor modifications had to be made to their protective suits. Um, we taped the hands this time so then the chain doesn't fall off her. She has really little hands. So we put the gloves underneath so that then the chain won't rub on her and then the tape just keeps the chain in place. And it looks tough. <laughs> Even Stuart had to wear a chain mail. I might not get bit, but I might drown with this stuff on. It's so heavy. I'm usually so macho, I don't need this stuff. I laugh at shark's teeth. <laughs> now you won't be laughing when you get a nice bite in the calf. We may have our future shark feeder here, darling. He'll be back, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, man. Perfect. OK, fingers. Beautiful. That is my spear for the day. It's like the hilt is actually like a hilt of a sword, so I'll protect Sam pretty well. Don't stab me with that, Sasha. <laughs> so right behind us is the Ray of Hope shipwreck. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down with the bait box. I'll bring it down to the bottom, and then I'm going to let you guys feed a few pieces each to the sharks. And what you're going to do is you're going to spear a piece of fish, and we're going to bring it up. We don't want to hold it up like this so the shark swims down and impales it, wanted to take it off to the side. A shark might bite your hand, and their teeth are small enough that they can get tangled in the chain mail. If that happens, you want to lock, hold tight, because they'll, they'll start to roll and shake, and they can actually cause tissue damage. So if you just hold tight, it's eventually going to let go. Terry's going to take you down and pick a good spot on the wreck where you probably have protection behind you. Then I'll bring the bait down. I hope this fits properly. Okay, Sam, there's no turning back now. You did ready? I'm definitely not ready. <laughs> Too bad, so sad. Let's get in. Dad, did you tell Mom I was doing this? <laughs> hey, Travis, you ready to go? All right, Dad, let's do it. Stuart Cole quickly initiates the feeding. Following a few demonstrations, he passes the honors to Sasha. In a short period of time, the action ramps up, way up. After some high adrenaline shark feeding, it's finally Samantha's turn. Amazing. She's just such a natural with them. She did not flinch at all when we went down there. She just went straight into it. 
It goes pretty well for the novice shark feeder, until she gets bitten on the hand. Fortunately, the chainmail did its job and protected her from injury. It was incredible, my first time feeding ever, and it was a very scary experience, but I'm so happy I did it. Some of these sharks were accidentally caught by fishermen. A few of the animals still have fish hooks embedded in their mouths. The only way to remove them is to employ tonic immobility. Temporarily incapacitated, it's quick work for Stewart and his son Travis to remove the hooks. Man, it was crazy. The kids are fabulous. There's so many sharks. That was ridiculous. A lot of energy down there. It was really cool. That was pretty scary, but it was really fun. Sam, you did fantastic. Gosh, they didn't invite you too hard, did they? Yeah, one bit me. So that's the tooth of a shark that bit Sam. Yeah, so uh, that situation was pretty unusual. You can see actually the tooth mark right here, where the chain links have come apart. As the shark bit down, that little tooth got stuck in there, but now Sam's got a souvenir and a cool story as well. <laughs> yeah, so for not. sure. Yeah. Show all my friends at home. And we got some pretty awesome stories to tell at school, definitely. The girls are amazing. We have two for sure here. Yeah. Stuart, what's with the two coffees? It's early in the morning, and uh, I'd like to be awake when I fly. Today we're gonna load onto the, the Baron, we're gonna fly up to Grand Bahama to Freeport, and then we're gonna go out in the specialized boat. We're going 25 miles uh, to a place where we know the way there's tiger sharks. Hey, Stu, how you doing? Good, Jim. You ready for this flight up to Tiger Beach? Uh, I can't Beach? wait to eat those tigers. I'm going to go see the big sharks. We're going to go on this little plane here. This may be more dangerous than diving with those big sharks. Spread out over an immense area, the best way to travel throughout the Bahamas is by plane. Many of the islands have tiny landing strips, suitable only for smaller aircraft. I became very interested in sharks after working on a couple of the Bond films and where we were wrangling tiger sharks and then creating uh, shark diving experiences off of New Providence, I was so excited about it. I wanted to get involved with different species and the Bahamas has such a healthy population of sharks and having a plane enables me to fly to different islands to interact with these different sharks. From Grand Bahama, even with a fast boat, it's still a lengthy journey to infamous Tiger Beach. So what we've learned about the tigers is they're very opportunistic eaters. We want to have a lot of awareness when the tigers are around. As long as they're swimming around us, and if they come too close, you can push them away. But I think if they get a little bit of a taste, you could have a problem. Gotcha. You guys ready to go? Let's roll. My father was an avid diver when I was a wee one, and his best friend owned a dive shop in Nassau, and they taught me to dive when I was five. When I was a, a young man on vacation, I'd always work on their dive boat as a gopher. You know, go for this, go for that, hand the fins out to the guests, and they would let me dive. I'd just go off and dive by myself. As a young teenager, we would go out and we'd meet tourists, meet friends, and we would teach them to dive. So by the time I was 18 or so, I was a well-seasoned dive instructor. This is what we call Bahama Blue. Prettiest water in the world. Got a lemon shark already. Some fresh wahoo with some guys just caught. This is what we're gonna use to chum with. You have right here an 8, 10 foot lemon shark, and we can have up to 40 of these animals at the same time. Well, you know, this is a little more serious diving today. We have to watch our back. Tiger sharks are one of the top predators, like a white shark in some ways. 
One of the main animals of prey for the tigers here are the turtles. And you can see them sneak up on the turtles and then they'll, they'll, they'll bite their fins and they'll try to get underneath, but they sneak up on them. And I, I think that's what they do with us because we always find them sneaking up on the divers. They come from behind. I'm gonna watch your back. Okay. You watch mine too though, because they're always sneaking up behind. I'm not getting any younger, but diving with these sharks, man, it's the best thing I can do. I, I never get bored of it. The Tiger Beach experience, we had a spectacular day. The water was flat, calm. As soon as we got to location, we had two large lemon sharks. Stu set the uh, box up at the bottom, started gently putting the bait into the water. One big tiger, female, I think, came along, and then uh, a few more lemons came along. And I said, this is pretty easy, I'm doing great. And within 10 minutes, we had a big tiger shark, and we started to interact with those three sharks. When we get in the water with the tigers and the lemon sharks, obviously we draw them to us with a bait box. And we take bait out of the box and we feed it to the sharks. Uh, it's very controversial, but you're not gonna get the kind of uh, interaction and close encounters without using food and chum and baiting in these sharks. And we bait them in so close that we can actually touch them and rub them, and they seem to enjoy it. All of a sudden, two tigers, three tigers, four tigers, 15, 20 lemons. I'm going, gee, this could look really good. And then they start coming two feet off the bottom. And they're like, are they coming at my feet? So I've got the camera right in their face, following them. And then they're crossing each other right in front of, right in front of my feet. I'm going, this is okay, right, Stu? Oh yeah, this is great, Jim. Just keep going, I'm, you're doing great. And then after a while, I'm spinning like a top trying to keep an eye on these things. So. Uh, it goes from controlled shooting to totally uncontrolled shooting. You're trying to watch a tiger shark, and there's one over here, one over there, and all of a sudden, there's one going between your legs from behind. Fantastic. A solitary, mostly nocturnal predator. Tiger sharks are second only to great whites for the most recorded attacks on humans. They often roam close to shore, creating the potential for encounters with swimmers, surfers, and divers. Unlike great whites that mostly prey on seals and sea lions, tiger sharks will eat virtually anything, including us. Stuart Cove is certainly well acquainted with sharks and doesn't have any qualms about feeding them. But handing out pieces of fish to 10 to 15 foot tiger sharks without chain mail or the protection of a cage is a bit extreme for some people. These animals are habituated to the presence of divers and used to being fed. But the small scraps of food they receive are a tiny fraction of their daily requirements. It's more like handing out treats to really big dogs. Dogs that can bite you in half. That was unbelievable. I've done several dives out here over the years, and that there was, to me, the best. But that was a fantastic dive. And I didn't really see any super aggressiveness down there. And you were touching them, and, and uh, you seeing them moving them along a little bit like big dogs. You get your share, and they weren't pushing and shoving. They're kind of lining up for their food. What got them ramped up there near the end was there was a big piece of wahoo carcass, which is very bloody. And I took it out, and I was trying to give it to the tiger shark. But the lemon shark grabbed hold of it, and it went taken off and shook it, and the blood went everywhere. And you could see everything changed. The, all the lemon sharks went after them. The tiger sharks kind of arched their backs a little bit. And at that point, I think I felt a little bit uncomfortable. But most of the dive with those sharks all around me, I mean, they're around my legs, on my feet. I had no protection on my hands, no chain mail on my body. But I didn't at any time really feel in danger. 
Wow. I just love my job. For a fish with such a vicious reputation, sharks in the Bahamas make a disarming first impression. They're not exactly cute or cuddly, but sharks here simply go about their business, as most predators do when left undisturbed. We're generally not on their menu, and they view us as just another fish on the reef. Tourism accounts for nearly half the gross national product of the Bahamas. And diving is a multi-million dollar industry with sharks an ever-increasing draw. It's abundantly clear that a live shark here is worth far more than a dead one. The Bahamas is one of only five small nations that have completely banned commercial shark fishing. Multinational fleets are not welcome in these waters. It really was a big deal that a small country like the Bahamas, you know, joining other small countries, took on the giants and, you know, determined that this was something that had to be done. We are very optimistic that we're going to be able to influence the larger countries and get them to see why it's important to protect sharks. So I think the future is bright. And as a small country, we really feel proud that we stepped up to the plate and we salute the government. You know, here in the Bahamas, we're the leaders in shark conservation. We realize how valuable a shark is, not only to the economy, but to the environment. And hopefully other countries have realized that a live shark is gonna keep their waters healthy, keep their fish population strong. A dead shark isn't gonna do them much good. It's only good for them one time. I am very proud to be a Bahamian and proud of our country and the stance that it has taken in conservation and protecting sharks. It's estimated that a single live shark is worth as much as $200,000 in tourism revenue over its lifetime. Its ecological value is inestimable. Studies in the Bahamas and the Caribbean have shown that where sharks are keystone species, their depletion could ultimately destroy coral reefs. Their role in the food chain is crucial. If the sharks are gone, so too goes a rich ecosystem, one that feeds local people and keeps visitors coming back. Now, I've been blessed to grow up with all this healthy marine environment here in the Bahamas. Lots of sharks with oceanic white tips, hammerheads, reef sharks, tiger sharks. And I hope that they're here for my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, for many generations beyond that, that they can enjoy this wonderful resource. And I am very optimistic that many of these species that are now threatened are going to be able to bounce back and that human beings are going to understand how important it is to live in balance with these very important creatures that inhabit our waters.